Nazi experiments carried out on the toxicity of radioactive material in 1941 and 42 suggest that the Nazis were indeed working on various forms of radioactive devices, more commonly referred to today as dirty bombs. This device, believed to weigh approximately 5,000 pounds, was wrapped in radioactive sand. Had it been detonated over Manhattan, it would have spread radioactive fallout over a large area. If that bomb had been airburst over the city at maybe 10 to 15,000 feet, then the radioactive sand uh, or silica encasing the bomb itself would have been able to spread, particularly if released somewhat upwind, uh, far and wide over the city. But the Nazis did not have an aircraft capable of dropping a bomb on the other side of the Atlantic. The challenge was to find radical new concepts to build a transatlantic bomber, Hitler's America bomber. Siegfried Kannemeyer organized a bizarre competition. Top aeronautical engineers of the day were asked to come up with ideas. Kennemeyer finally opted to go with three of them. One was, was an old friend named Reimer Horton. Reimer Horton had designed all-wing sailplanes beginning in the 1930s. In fact, Siegfried Kennemeyer had a favorite Horton aircraft that he flew from time to time. Siegfried Kennemeyer also turned to a rocketeer by the name of Eugen Zanger. At one time, Eugen Zanger had proposed a, a piloted, reusable, suborbital bomber. The third person he had asked for an America bomber, as Siegfried was calling it, was Werner von Braun. Von Braun had spoken many times about hitting New York City, 3,500 miles away. So von Braun was thinking long range. He was thinking about a flying machine that was capable of crossing the Atlantic Ocean. And he had mentioned many times that he had a rocket system called the A-9 with a, with a booster called the, the A-10 that could hit New York City from anywhere in Germany. But Werner von Braun was not the only rocketeer in the race to build an aircraft to carry Hitler's warhead across the Atlantic. Like von Braun, Eugen Zenger had experimented with rockets since the 1930s. Unique in several ways, his conceptual vehicle was reusable and employed a revolutionary launch system. Eugen Singer's idea for a horizontally launched rocket plane was novel, brand new, fresh. It was reusable. It, it could be set up any place. It didn't require the thousands of people it required to launch a V-2 rocket. Sanger's horizontally launched rocket could be done with several hundred people. And the turnaround time was in matters of, of hours, not days, as, as Von Braun's uh, A9, A10 combination. This uh, sled device would have been powered with up to about 15 of the V2 engines that Werner Von Braun had developed. So the sled would have had to contain tankage for large amounts of fuel to push the sled down the track. As the bomber reached a point near the end of the track, the vehicle would detach from the jet-powered sled and remain unpowered for just a few seconds before its onboard engine, designed by Sanger, ignited. And it would have burned an onboard load of fuel and because of its forward speed and centripetal force would go into what is in effect a low earth orbit at roughly 115 to 120 mile altitude. At roughly 100 feet long and with a 40 foot wingspan, Zenger's craft was designed for hypersonic flight, meaning it could reach a speed of almost 14,000 miles per hour. And somewhere over Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, this bomb internally in the bomb bay would be released in a ballistic arc designed to hit New York or Washington, D.C. It was revolutionary. 
but Senger's design was just too far ahead of its time. Kennemeyer, unconvinced by rocket-powered America bombers, focused his attention on the last of the three competitors, Walter and Reimer Horton. He believed their design would be the one to successfully drop an atom bomb on New York. Walter Horton, a fighter pilot in the Battle of Britain, had transferred to fighter command in Berlin. There, he tirelessly promoted his younger brother Reimer's all-wing aircraft designs. Walter Horton convinced Kennemeyer that an all-wing or delta-wing design would win the America bomber race. Encouraged by the proposal, Kennemeyer provided the brothers with empty government buildings on the edge of Göttingen in central Germany. It was here that Reimer Horton went to work on his first military aircraft, a twin turbojet delta-wing fighter. The creation of the fighter plane was an evolutionary development leading toward the development of the America bomber, which was to be powered by six turbine engines. And the reason that the Horton brothers felt this aircraft would be able to reach the United States was that the flying wing as a design had no fuselage or tail assembly. This made it roughly 20 to 30 percent more efficient. And if they could design an airframe that held enough fuel, they felt that they'd be able to reach the United States, successfully bomb either New York or Washington. The Horton brothers felt that their all-wing design was much more efficient than other planes being used at the time. Because it had no tail, the all-wing design had less drag, and that meant it could fly further with less fuel consumption than conventional aircraft. Kennemeyer was convinced that the Horton Delta Wing concept was right for the America bomber project, and issued the order for work to proceed on an enlarged version of the H-09 fighter. Horton's new bomber was called the HO-118. The aircraft, to be made out of wood instead of radar reflecting metal, was a delta wing 132 feet wide, had six jet engines, and was capable of flying at 600 miles per hour. Even today, the images of this design mirror the most advanced aircraft technology of the 21st century. Von Braun, buoyed by the success of his V-2 rockets, began to refine plans for his transatlantic bomber. Werner von Braun had a very simple uh, plan. He was going to take one of his V-2 rockets. He was going to take out the warhead and put a human in there, a pilot. In order to get the range, von Braun was going to create a booster rocket called the A-10. The 200,000 pounds of thrust. That would lift the V-2 off the launch pad with the pilot in there, take it up about 40 miles, and that way, Ron Brown could reach New York City 3,500 miles away. Werner Von Brown's uh, plan to bomb New York City would have been a virtually a kamikaze flight, and Werner Von Brown didn't care. Anyway, the pilot would never have survived a bailout of, of that A-9 rocket, because it would be coming in to New York City approaching 3,000 miles per hour. There was no way anyone could get out of that rocket plane. Von Braun had confidence in his plan for the America bomber. By late 1944, he had added wings to the V-2, and in December had test flown his prototype America bomber, the A-4B. But whilst von Braun's fortunes floundered, his competitors were busy. North of Hanover, in the dense pine forests, Eugen Zenger worked day and night on his rocket. Cloaked in secrecy, 
Even high-ranking German officials didn't know the exact details of his mission, or for that matter, the fact that the research project even existed. Also hidden away in a secret facility, the Horton Brothers Delta Wing America bomber was beginning to take shape. Set back by failures to their H-09 fighter version of the craft, work on the larger model had been slow to begin. In workshops in Göttingen, the brothers had refined their design, incorporating twin stabilizers to the aircraft, and at Muldorf, a new hangar was being built to house the jet. Like von Braun's project, the Horton's hangar at Muldorf was being built using prisoners from concentration camps. As the hangar began to take shape, the Horton's Delta Wing America bomber looked set to become the first in Hitler's race to hit New York. In the last desperate months of the Second World War, Hitler was well on the way to building a bomber that could hit New York. But as the Allies closed in on the Reich, they captured airfields from which they could penetrate ever deeper into German territory. The hangar and camps at Muldorf in southeast Germany, where the Horton brothers were building their Delta Wing America bomber, now became a target. Just as the complex neared completion, 35 Allied bombers, escorted by 100 fighters, attacked. The hangar was destroyed, and with it, the Horton's dreams of building their America bomber. For the third time, Allied airstrikes had crippled Hitler's plans to build a transatlantic bomber capable of delivering his deadly weapon. By spring 1945, Hitler's plans to bomb New York were in real trouble. The Allies advanced into Germany, and both Russian and American forces raced towards Berlin. It is estimated that the Horton brothers were almost two years from completing their version of the America bomber, the HO-118. But these machines, or rather variants of them, would eventually become a reality. Reimer Horton's Delta Wing design was taken up by the American aircraft manufacturer Northrop, who built the XP-49, the template upon which America's B-2 bomber was built. The V-2s of the Second World War evolved into the rockets that had taken man to the moon and the intercontinental ballistic missiles of the Cold War. And Eugen Sanger's orbital rocket introduced the reusable shuttle concept, one eventually embraced by NASA and von Braun. America's huge armament and space programs of the 20th century have grown out of the technologies pioneered by the men tasked with destroying New York. It is ironic that in 1969, instead of radioactive dust falling onto crowds on Fifth Avenue, it was ticker tape that fluttered down between Manhattan's skyscrapers. The city that he had once hoped to destroy had eventually become the scene of Werner von Braun's greatest triumph. <laughs>